Hello, Napa Cart volunteers. I'd like to talk to you today about wildfire smoke hazards, what you need to know, and what you can do about it. So wildfire smoke is particularly difficult because it disperses so quickly. This photo was taken up at the uh, Angwin PUC stables where we were evacuating horses in 2020. And you can see it looks pretty dramatic behind that hill. And multiple fires coalescing is a worst case scenario. And that's exactly what we had in 2020. So what is so hazardous about wildfire smoke, to both humans and animals? Well, there's a lot of bad stuff in there, as you know. You can imagine everything that burns from you know, furniture containing formaldehyde to, oh gosh, you name it, just use your imagination. Uh, but the real problem is these small, small particles of 2.5 microns or less. Uh, and this picture was taken up on Spring Mountain again in 2020, and it looks bad up there. You just couldn't even see around a corner. And of course, uh, air quality like this makes you hurt a little bit. It, it makes you uh, cough and you might feel like your lungs are a little bit inflamed. And that's, that's not good, but it's not the big problem. Usually um, particles that are a little bit larger, like dust, uh, pollen, they run around 10 microns. And you can cough those up eventually uh, when your, your lungs have an inflammatory response. And that's actually a good thing because it allows you to get that stuff up and out of there. But these small particles are a whole nother matter. Now, just as a point of reference, human hair, a single human hair, it runs about 60 microns. So that's how small we're talking about here. So the problem is this stuff gets into your lungs, like everything else, uh, but it absorbs into the bloodstream from there. That's where the problem comes in. <clears throat> so you're going to have acute effects, to be sure. But way, many years down the road, all of these toxins that got absorbed into your bloodstream uh, can cause a lot of problems. And if you have a pre-existing condition, like a heart condition or respiratory conditions, obviously uh, you're, you're much more susceptible to this than an otherwise uh, perfectly healthy person would be. Remember that? That's what it felt like and, and looked like in 2020. And you know, if, you, if it looks like this, you definitely are gonna feel it. And if you feel it, it's definitely doing some damage. So what do we do about it? Well, the gold standard is the N95 respirator and it gets its name because NIOSH approved respirators, that's where the N comes from, are able to filter out 95% of particulate matter. That's pretty good. But keep in mind, it's not an N100 respirator, right? Nothing filters out 100%. We just don't have uh, filtering face pieces like that. So definitely wear that N95 because it's way better than nothing, but keep in mind that it's not perfect. So the only other thing that you can really do is limit your exposure. Know when enough is enough. And from those previous slides where we talked about why these tiny particles are so difficult, not just in the short term, but for long-term health consequences, limiting your exposure is a very key component of protecting yourself. And just a quick tip, Using recirculating air uh, settings on your air conditioner when you're driving, it helps a little bit. You know, these, these cabin filters aren't very effective, but hey, it's something and every little bit helps. But using an air quality index or AQI app on your phone uh, is an excellent way of protecting yourself. Let me show you how. So some folks probably are already familiar with airnow.gov. This is a phone app. It's good for Android or iOS, uh, Apple products, whatever you want, it's out there. And it provides uh, information on air quality right away. So knowledge is power, people. Now you've got that power right in your pocket. But let's take a closer look. Let's see, Napa, California, not available. What? How can that be? Well, that's because this is a government site. And these sensors that they use are really expensive. They have to be calibrated, they have to be monitored. So the data that comes from the EPA site is neither as uh, relevant time-wise or uh, as relevant topography-wise as we would like it to be. 
In fact, if you take a look at this photo, you can see the green and yellow dots represent the location of the EPA sensors. Hmm, let's see. Napa doesn't really have any at all. So we've got one in Fairfield, Vacaville, west of Santa Rosa. That's just not good enough. If you uh, use Lake Berryessa um, in this map as a uh, reference point, you'll see that pretty much the entire county of Napa is not represented by EPA centers. All right, so now what? Well, there's an app for that, right? Purple Air. So this is different than the EPA sensors. This is actually a crowdsourced project. These are laser particle sensors, which are you know, not very expensive at all. In fact, for a couple hundred bucks, you too can be the first on your block to participate in this crowdsourced project in which obviously scores of sensors are located around that can give us some pretty good and highly relevant data. You can see that there's a little menu on the uh, bottom of the screenshot there, and there's conversions and there's all kinds of good stuff in there. Uh, and this is a very, very, very good uh, source of information, but it does have a couple of problems. Um, one, you'll notice that on the bottom of the screen uh, where the sensors are, it shows an outlier there, 156. And there's another one of 100 in the uh, orange bubble up closer to the top. Well, as I stated before, laser particle sensors are tricky. You know, they're, they're not these giant um, EPA sensors that get calibrated all the time. So if you see an outlier like that, that's probably exactly what it is, an outlier. Somebody lit off their barbecue under their uh, personal laser particle sensor. So you wanna take those with a grain of salt, but uh, clearly you can see wonderful um, area trends. And this is much better information for you to know what you're getting into uh, when you get out into the field. But there's a little trick here that I wanna show you. So PACU app. That stands for, the PA stands for purple air. Couldn't tell you what KU stands for, but this app, which is readily available um, to download on any phone, this is the one that I use because it's super simple. It gives me a ton of information at a glance. Uh, and also it has a really nice uh, feature that allows you to convert uh, EPA data or excuse me, the laser sensor data uh, into something that is a little closer aligned with the EPA data. I'll show you what I mean. So here you have two screens on the Paku app. And on the left-hand side, you'll see a checkbox for AQ and U. That stands for AQ and University. Uh, and University of Utah, by the way, they developed this conversion factor uh, for the particle sensor uh, information. And it was good. You know, it, it, it got us pretty close to EPA, but not quite close enough. But now we have a much better conversion factor. And all you have to do in your uh, settings for the PACU app is check US EPA and leave it right there. Just, just check it and forget it. You don't ever have to worry about it again. And you'll see that the sensor readings are different. Same screenshot, just switch conversion factors. And you'll notice that the... Uh, AQ sensors uh, run a little hot, uh, and the US EPA uh, give you some numbers that I would call a little more favorable, and they are closer to the US EPA sensors, so that's the one you want. Set it and forget it. I like that, but wait, there's more. This Paku app also offers real-time or averages, but it offers something else really important. Uh, you probably realize that whenever we deploy to a uh, fire, wildfire, it's almost by definition going to be a heat event. And another thing that people like us that go out and work in these um, deployments, you have to be extremely aware of heat illness. So on the bottom, on the right-hand side, you'll see that, oh, good, there's a, a temperature and a humidity percentage. Love that. That enables you to have real-time data throughout the day of what kind of trouble you might be getting into and you know, being exposed to both heat and to smoke. And the other thing I like about this is that you can just poke any one of those sensors and it's gonna bring you perfect information that you need to know right away for the area that you actually are working in. And it's in plain English, that's kind of nice. 
It even has a warning if you happen to be one of those unusually sensitive people we talked about with pre-existing conditions. But under the everyone else uh, column there, it says, hey, it's a great day to be active outside. We should be so lucky during the fire deployment. Uh, and also on the left-hand side, you'll see that you have the option to switch from real time to averages all the way up to a one week average. Um, I like the idea of a one day average at the end of the day. Just bring up the one day average, take a screenshot on your phone and you can track your exposure over time throughout a deployment. This is a fantastic tool to help you stay safe. So this is the wildfire smoke dashboard and most of us have seen this before. Fortunately, it's really intuitive. It's kind of like a tachometer. Uh, if you're in the green or the yellow color, um, yeah, good, you're fine, no problems. But when you start getting up into the orange level, that's when we need to start tracking and monitoring much more carefully and using the techniques we've already talked about, using your N95, uh, tracking your exposure and knowing your own personal risks become very important at that point. So I want you to take a mental screenshot of this little dashboard because when you bring up the information on any of the apps that we've just talked about, the sensors are just gonna show you in these colors what the, uh, what the air is looking like uh, in the region that you're working. So, I mean, it barely takes any thought process at all to know what you're getting into. Here's the take home for this. Just don't take any chances with smoke, smoke exposure. We know now from a lot of research that's been going on because of the frequency of fires uh, anymore that smoke exposure is far more dangerous than we originally thought that it was. We always knew about the acute hazards of smoke exposure, but the chronic exposure risks um, were kind of hidden to us, not anymore. So use those tools, maintain your personal situational awareness, know those hazards and know how to mitigate them. You've got plenty of tools to work with here. So I hope that this works for you. Um, and by all means, uh, if your other teammates are not aware of this, go, go through the information with them and make sure they download that app. All right, folks, thanks for listening and I will see you out there.